Have you ever made New Year's resolutions before? And if you have, how many times did you actually follow through with them throughout the entire year? I'm guessing that number is pretty low, but I want you to know that it's not your fault. The problem isn't you, it's your plan. You did have a plan, right? Whether this is your first time making resolutions or it's an annual practice, I wanna share with you the reasons why most resolutions fail within the first one to two months out of the year and how to reframe your goals so you actually stick with them through December 31st and beyond. And I promise you, it's way easier than you think. First, let's talk about why resolutions don't work out, and I think the answer is really going to surprise you. It's not that you were too busy or not motivated enough or didn't put enough time into it. It's that it just didn't really fit into your lifestyle to begin with. Sure, having six-pack abs or a highly simplified house sounds great on paper, right? And for the month of January, it sounds awesome too. But as life goes on and things start to get in your way, you start to realize that not only do you have to work to get these things, but you also have to work to maintain them. So it's not like a one-and-done situation. And that's what resolutions are. It's a full change to your lifestyle. It's not just for the year. It's something that you continue to do, something you continue to work into your routines forever, really. For some people, a lifestyle change is totally fine and easily doable, but for others, it's really hard to just completely overhaul your entire life and create all these new habits and routines when you're already stressed to the max and you have so much going on in your schedule. That doesn't mean that you failed and you'll never have six-pack abs or a fully decluttered house that Pinterest would be jealous of. It really just means that it's not for you right now at this time. We live incredibly busy lives with distractions and unexpected circumstances popping up all over the place all the time, so no wonder these goals are so hard to stick with. Before you set even one resolution this year, I want you to give yourself a pass on all the incomplete goals that you've created in the past. We're going to be able to come at this with a completely fresh start, a new way to tackle your goals, and I'm going to be here by your side helping you along the way, and I'm going to show you the easiest way to set a goal, stick with it, and be able to maintain it. So let's talk about how to set realistic goals. I have four tips for you. They're all fast and easy. I want you to grab a piece of paper and a pen because this first one is going to require a little bit of thought on your side, but we're going to do it together. My first tip is to get really clear on where you are right now. Before you can start throwing out resolutions just because they sound nice, we need to get clear on where you are in all aspects of your life. This is going to help you decide which goals are going to benefit your life and which ones aren't as big of a priority as you thought they were. On that piece of paper, start by writing down the following categories in a list. Number one is home and family. Number two is health and fitness. Three is love and romance. Four is your career and future. Five is your finances, and six is your spirituality and happiness. Now, I want you to go through and rank each one of these on a scale between 1 and 10, with 10 being I am totally rocking this category, and 1 being this category is messier than a junk drawer. Be super honest with yourself while you're doing this, because these rankings really help you focus on which areas you truly need to work on versus just picking random goals. It's best to focus on your two lowest rankings. So if you got a five on fitness and a four on your love and relationships, but everything else got a seven or above, those are the two that you should probably work on first. Of course, you can choose whichever ones you want, but this exercise is kind of like an in-your-face way to see what areas in your life are lacking, and it really helps you choose goals that you're actually more willing to stick with, and they're not gonna get pushed off to the side again. Tip number two is just to choose one or two resolutions, and then we're going to break those down into 90-day chunks. New Year resolutions seem impossible to plan for, and that's because they are impossible to plan for. You know that job interview question that's so annoying when they say, where do you see yourself in a year, and you have no idea how to answer that? That's because we can't really see ourselves somewhere in a year. A year is a long time. It's hard to imagine where we're going to be. It's hard to know what's going to come at us. We don't know what kind of things are going to happen next week, much less eight months from now. 2020 taught us that, right? So the truth is, one-year goals, they just don't work. 
I highly recommend breaking down your big goal into four smaller quarterly goals, and that just makes it a lot easier to visualize and track and stick with these goals, and it gives you a clear plan too. You're basically gonna take that big goal and break it down into four steps. Those four steps are gonna be your four 90-day goals and they're way more achievable to do. If your resolution is to have a completely organized home, your first quarter goal is gonna be something like organizing all the bedrooms and closets in your house. And the second quarter goal would be bathrooms and living spaces. Third quarter would be kitchen and dining areas. And fourth quarter would be like your hobby and storage spaces. It's a whole lot easier to imagine an organized home when you look at it at steps like this. But if you start on January 1st saying, I'm going to have a more organized house, where in the world are you even going to start? You're going to have no idea. You're going to jump around from task to task. You're going to try out all these different ideas that all these different influencers are telling you to do. And when December 31st hits, you haven't really done much of anything at all, leaving you feeling like you're just not an organized person. These 90-day goals give you a starting point, an ending point, a clear goal, and you're able to see at the end of that time if, one, you were able to achieve it, or two, if that resolution is even important to you anymore. You may get halfway through and realize organizing really isn't that important to me. Really, I feel like I need to be getting rid of things. So halfway through the year, you might decide that you want to shift your resolution from organizing to decluttering. And it's totally fine to completely change your resolution, to drop them. It's not a big deal. You are not up against anyone except yourself. So this separation of steps it kind of gives you a stopping point and the ability to let it go if it's not working for you, but it also gives you the motivation to be able to see in three months, I organized this entire group of rooms in my house and I can't wait to do it again. Now you can break down each quarterly goal into monthly checkpoints if you want, but I want to encourage you to not get too specific on your planning because when you have too many plans, that starts to add a lot of pressure and it makes it harder to stick with your goals because it's not really fun anymore. It just feels like work. Try to keep it loosey-goosey so you can work on things when you're motivated and you want to versus doing things just because you feel like you have to. Tip number three is to create a not-to-do list. If resolutions aren't your thing, or if you just don't have a really big goal that needs to be broken down into four chunks, but you still want to be able to make improvements to your life, I highly, highly encourage you to try out a not-to-do list. We all have some kind of habit that we want to break, and resolutions don't always fit the mold for those. A typical resolution would be something like, I want to improve my finances, but that's pretty vague and a little hard to follow. So instead, by reframing it into a not to do list, you would have things like, I will not go grocery shopping without a list, or I will not order takeout more than X amount of times a month. That simple mindset shift is gonna keep you on track without having a goal that you have to follow or checkpoints that you need to make. It's really just an affirmation of a reminder of your new lifestyle. My fourth tip is to not get carried away in creating too many resolutions. If we had created a resolution for each one of the six categories above, can you imagine how much time you would need to devote in your daily schedule to be able to achieve all those things? You'd be even more all over the place than you already are now. One or two main goals for the year keep you from getting distracted and help you stay focused on what you want to achieve. They help you build habits that become second nature and you don't have to work so hard to make them happen. A goal of holding a 60 second handstand all of a sudden becomes achievable when you reframe that into thinking, I'm only gonna do 15 minutes of practice every day. But if you had five other resolutions that also required 15 minutes of something every day, that would be a ton of other things that you're trying to fit into your already busy lifestyle. See how just one or two things are going to get the attention while still not completely overhauling your entire life? If you're dead set on working on more than one or two resolutions for the year, shift that into quarterly goals. So instead of having one big goal for the year and you broke it down into the four steps for each quarter, you're gonna do a different category for each quarter. So for January through March, you could work on your health and fitness. 
In the second quarter, you would work on your finances. In the third quarter, you'd work on organizing and decluttering. And then the fourth quarter can be career development. This is gonna gradually add new habits into your routines every three months. And we all know it takes a little while to get used to a routine. So after you have been doing something for that three month period, it's kind of going to be a part of your day and you're more likely to be able to continue doing last quarter's things in addition to the one that you're adding for the next quarter. Now it's time for some accountability. Leave a comment down below on what your resolution for this year is, as well as the four steps you're gonna take each quarter to achieve it. And while you're there, make sure you scroll through and see what other people's intentions are as well. While they may be completely different than yours, it's really just motivating to be around other people who are as excited about growing and improving their lifestyles as you are, and that's gonna make you feel more motivated instantly. For more home and life organization tips and ideas, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next one. Happy New Year!